Hey everybody, I think it's Wednesday afternoon. Just got up from my retirement nap. I can take a nap anytime I want to. I'm retired. 74, if you've never met me before, my name is Bernie Bear for short, Bernard Eugene Beringer for long birth certificate, and on YouTube it's B period Eugene Bear, B E A R, one word, Eugene Bear. I drink and eat in front of you, if you can forgive me for that. I teach pretty good, so listen up. This teaching started, this is actually a take two. I actually had a take one that I'm going to delete off of YouTube and Facebook. This is take two. I think I'll do a better job. It is a touchy subject. Gentiles are told to be cheer, cheerful givers, give joyfully and cheerfully. And if you're going to attend a congregation, church, assembly, denomination, help pay the electrical bill, the air conditioning bill, uh, supplies for the kids, you know, take part, be a member, and give uh, as God prospers you give there any percentage. Nowhere in red letter in the Gospels or in the New Testament are Gentiles told to tithe. The only chapter and the only letter in the New Testament where you find the word tithe, and I believe Paul wrote Hebrews, is in the seventh chapter. And depending on your translation, there are many errors there, starting with the name of Abram. It's not Abraham, it's Abram. Abram has not had a name change yet. And he's returning with the goods, the possessions, the spoils of the slaughter, spoils of war, where humanity is killed. All right? And he had 318 men, and he split them up and attacked at night and got everything back that this army who defeated the king of Sodom and the king of Gomorrah and took all the spoil and the women. <laughs> and it must have been so uh, the king of Sodom's harem uh, or girlfriend that was in the women because when Abram brought the goods and the spoils and the women back. Uh, that's what uh, the king of Sodom wanted was the people, the persons, the women, and, and you can keep everything else. And Abraham kept none of it, lest the king of Sodom would say that he made Abraham rich. Okay, now, in the past 2,000 years plus, since Christianity that started in 325 AD, Catholicism in Italy and Rome. <clears throat> Rome has become one of the richest churches in the world, uh, browbeating people with tithe, saying you're robbing God out of Malachi. And I have studied Malachi thoroughly. Uh, we're not, we're only going to go halfway deep or halfway high in this teaching. I uh, Otherwise, I'd have to break it down and maybe teach it on four whiteboards for a month, all four weeks, to get a total understanding of it. I'm going to kind of do a quick overview. And uh, because in chapter 7 of Hebrews, they get mixed up tenth and tithe. And tithe belongs to the Levitical priesthood. And the Lord is a great high priest not of Aaron or the Levitical priesthood, but after the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek brought bread and wine to Abram and blessed him, and they too blessed God who gave Abraham favor in the battle, put his enemy into Abram's hands, and Abram was victorious. So the greater Melchizedek blessed Ab Abram, Abram blessed Melchizedek back with a tenth of the spoils of war, of the slaughter, of killing of humanity. And the two of them blessed God because Melchizedek says, the Most High has blessed you with victory. 
Okay? So, you have to read, oh, uh, Malachi. Judah's in trouble for marrying pagan, marrying outside of Jewish women. The priesthood is lying. The priesthood is taking in rotten bread and maimed animals. Israel is in trouble in Malachi, and Malachi is all about Israel from the first chapter, first few verses to the last chapter and the last few verses. It's Israel. Every time the nations, plural, are mentioned, they get a good report. They fear God and bring their best and pure offering to God. So the Gentiles are on good ground, the nations. It's Israel that's on bad ground in Malachi that's robbing God. I want to make that clear, okay? But they browbeat Christianity and the Gentiles saying you're robbing God if you don't pay a tenth. And you're supposed to be a joyful giver, whether it's 2%, 5%, 10%, 15%, 25%, or 50%. or fifty percent. Be a joyful giver. You don't have to give an exact amount of your income. Gentiles. All right? Now, if we go back to Genesis 14, and the very first thing, uh, let me read in Hebrews 7, where we find tenth and tithe. And depending on your translation, I'll explain why if you take 10 Dixie cups, fill one of them with stones, you cannot eat stones and live. Right? If you put them in your mouth and swallow them, they'll kill you. So you can have a tenth of gravel or stones that's not tithe. It's a tenth of the gravel and stones, but it's not the tithe commanded to Israel. Out of love, they till the ground. They grow grapes. They grow olives. They grow wheat. They raise sheep, and they can eat and live off that, and it's done in acknowledging God, loving God, God reigning on the crops, and it's done without killing humanity or spoils of war. That's my point. And a tenth part of the spoils or the goods of war was given. Tithe was not paid. Levi did not pay tithe through Abram. A tenth part of the spoils of war was paid through Abram. Even though Levi was commanded to take tithe of his brethren, the 11 tribes that grew crops and raised sheep because the priesthood didn't have it, wasn't given any land to grow crops and raise sheep. So when the sheep was brought, the skin, the fat, the entrails were burned as a sacrifice to God. The good meat was kept to feed the priesthood. From love that raised sheep in peace and love that grew crops and God reigned on it is a whole different thing than the tenth of the spoils of war. I hope you got that because we're eight minutes in. Now I want you to thoroughly read Genesis the first account, and the main thing, the point I'm going to make about mistranslation is the name of Abraham during chapter 7 of Hebrews should be Abram every time, not Abraham. His name change has not taken place yet. He is Abram the Hebrew in, four, in the 14th, all the way up. In fact, he doesn't get his name change till 17.5. And we're before that, when he takes his 318 men of his house that are trained in battle and goes and has a victorious battle, and God blesses him in victory in the battle. And he gets back locked, all his goods and possessions, and all the goods and possessions of the four kings. I think it was four kings, but all the goods and possessions of the king of Sodom. And the king of Sodom says, you can keep it all. Just give me the slaves or the people or the women. Because I think his harem or his girlfriend was in the midst of the women that he lost in battle. <laughs> That's my own personal opinion. Okay. So, but you have to read verse 14. And I guess the king's name is B-E-R-A, Burah, king of Sodom. 
And then there's uh, another one, uh, the king of Gomorrah, all the, all the kings that went out to battle and they lost the battle. So a once Abram gets the news, he Abram the Hebrew in verse 13, I'm doing a quick overview. I added spoil to goods in 16. Uh, and his brother Lot, his goods, and the women. Okay? Then we find slaughter in end of 17, and which means defeat, but it's taking a life. They killed the enemy. Okay? Then Melchizedek, king of Salem. Most Bible theologians think this is the early name for Jerusalem or Zion. Okay? City of Refuge Zion that the Jebusites built. It was a physical city of refuge, a fort with walls and a door. Very hard to get into, and David snuck in a unique way. We won't get into that. But he got in there, and they said you a blind man could defend Zion. And David says, okay, if you're blind, I'm going to sneak in through your water tunnel and defeat you. And he did. Okay. So Melchizedek, and Melchizedek brought bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God, El Elyon. Elyon, highest, no living gods higher than me, the Most High God, Elyon. I should write that in there. And uh, blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, all right? Abraham would not take any goods or spoils that belonged to the king of Sodom lest the king of Sodom said he made Abraham rich. And Ab Abram, excuse me, I said Abraham. Abram did not get his name changed, and H added in the fifth position of the fifth letter, which represents mercy, grace, and favor of God. Two H's in the sacred name of God. The fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Five represents mercy, grace, and the blessing, or the favor of God. And Abram got a cha name change to Abraham in 17.5, and Sarai got Sarah because she's going to, her dead womb at early 90s is going to bring Abram or Abraham a son. We can say Abraham when we're talking about Sarah getting her name changed. Abram got his name changed before Sarah, and when we talk about Sarah, now we can say Abraham because his name's been changed. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. So when you get words, that's why I created the alpha arrow and I spell arrow A-O-R-R-H-E. The H is in the fifth position of the word arrow. Instead of, I used to read comic books, the black arrow, <laughs> back in the 40s, early 50s. Okay, uh, <clears throat> So, now, after we've studied chapter 14 of Genesis, and he returns with the goods, Lot, the goods, and the women, and the goods of the king, of the four kings, he gives a tenth of the spoils of war to Melchizedek. Melchizedek blesses him with wine and bread, and both Melchizedek and Abraham give honor and glory to God, who gave him the victory in the battle. Now we need to use Abram in the New Testament in Hebrews in the seventh chapter. I'm going to have to do a part two, come back 13 minutes, 14 minutes here. Stay with me. I'm the truth teacher. I'm the spirit teacher. And it is true. Christianity has ripped off hundreds and thousands of people, browbeating them, telling them they have to pay tithe. Nowhere in the New Testament does a Gentile have to pay the tithe that was commanded to Levi and his brethren, the priesthood, to take tithe. Tithe means tenth, but you can have a Dixie cup full of gravel, one-tenth of ten cups, and it's not tithe, it's a tenth of gravel. And you can have the tenth of the spoils of war. That's not the tithe of Israel. It's the tenth of the spoils of war that was taken slaughtering human beings and killing human beings. There's a difference. Love you. I'm teaching truth. And there will be a part two in Hebrews, the seventh chapter. 
clearing up incorrect translation of tenth and tithe. Bye!